over the past couple of months that i've been playing call of dragons i've come across a bunch of different features and improvements on this game that i really wish rise of kingdoms would just steal so today we're going to go over my 10 favorite features that were brought out with call of dragons what's going on guys cheers just as a side note i feel like i've been summoning bakshi way more from the gold keys than any other legendary hero uh, do you guys feel the same way is that am, am i just getting really lucky with him or, or what's going on does he have a higher drop rate i don't know anyway let's let's jump right into this okay the first feature is a really quick one but it is so simple and i gotta say when i click and i click deploy and there is a multi create feature with saved presets <sighs> bro being able to send out four marches right away at the exact spot that i send them to is an absolute blessing and i noticed this specifically in rise of kingdoms when i am going to attack some barbarians i gotta send out an army then i gotta send out another one then i gotta send it and every single time i'm clicking the preset and yes i know this is a really small thing but it's so easy and it's such a beautiful quality of life enhancement i don't have to go through the same menu screen four times just to send out enough armies i can just send them out once boom we're done and then you can just be on your way the second feature and this is even quicker and shorter than the than the first one but i just want to get it out of the way early on in this video is the skip chest opening animation button you click draw and then you click skip that is so unbelievably incredible for saving time i don't understand why when i'm opening crystal keys in rise of kingdoms or i'm opening up the legendary tavern keys i can't just skip the animation i've seen it literally tens of thousands of times at this point and i don't need to see it ever again whether i open one key or a thousand keys i want it to happen as soon as possible and the fact that i can do that in this game and it's instantaneous is a blessing it feels to me like a no-brainer let's just add the skip button it's easy okay let's get into some features that are a little bit more in depth the first two were more so like quality of life things but let's talk about elixir healing elixir healing is wonderful this is i don't know when they when they put elixir and healing in the game i feel like people were complaining about it bro this is amazing okay your hospital buildings will produce a resource called elixir okay and it will produce this every single hour and in fact you can also get elixir from elixir items here and as long as you have this resource that is produced for free 74,000 is produced for free for my I have a level 23 hospital here you can heal your units at no cost this is the only thing that elixir is used for at least at the time of recording this it's not used for anything else so this resource is produced by your hospitals for no other purpose than to be used by your hospitals and you're using this resource instead of your actual resources that you need to upgrade your buildings train your troops etc it is literally healing your troops for free now of course there is a cap here and there's also an elixir production speed so if you don't have enough elixir then you can actually use your real resources to heal down your troops but that's only as a last resort during big battles and i feel like this feature this function would enable for even more battles in rise of kingdoms i mean you would just be able to fight more and longer if you had a free healing system like this implemented into the game i love it on top of that there's no limits to the number of troops that can be in your hospital okay there's no such thing as overflowing your hospital in this game now you do still get dead troops from rally and garrison engagements those ratios are broken down here but the fact that your hospital can't overflow oh my god bro it's so nice it's so nice knowing that i don't have to worry about losing all my troops i just wake up one day and they're gone okay it happens to the best of us one day you'll realize this okay it hasn't happened to me in a while let me knock on wood next let's talk about the behemoth system in call of dragons this system is genius i love this essentially what this is if all you do is play rise of kingdoms this is like your holy sites out in the world and it's capturable by an alliance who gains the buffs associated with that capture but on top of that you actually get a super powerful behemoth that your alliance can deploy on the battlefields and 
these behemoths have some pretty incredible effects and skills out in the open world and dropping one of these at the right moment in a really tense battle can really make the difference and i feel like that could play a really nice strategic role in a game like rise of kingdoms i would love to see them take this feature maybe not as complex as it is here in call of dragons because rise of kingdoms is a little bit more simplified than call of dragons so maybe just having one type or two types of behemoths something like that uh or obviously they wouldn't even call them behemoths that would be something else right but to me this feature is amazing it is again another sort of strategic element that your alliance has and now there is a way for an alliance player to actually control that behemoth okay so when the game first came out you would summon a behemoth and it would just do what it thought was best uh, but now you can actually have a player control it okay so it's kind of like controlling a, a gundam okay or like a transformer you bring it on the battlefield it's like this unfair advantage it's just like this it's just a monster fighting on your behalf and you get to control it super cool next up we have another quick one and as you can see here there's actually a, a battle going on right out around right, right out in the world but you have the ability to send out a scout and leave it in the location you send it for 60 minutes one hour okay now this is amazing for clearing the fog which in my kingdom right now i we don't have any fog so i can't actually show you but in rise of kingdoms you can only leave a scout in one place for i think what five minutes maybe 10 minutes something like that but 60 minutes is amazing because then you can send them and they can walk for 20 minutes and then sit there for another 60 and you can actually go do something in your house you come back and boom he's still chilling there and you don't have to wait for him to come all the way back it's amazing I don't know why they don't just it, it, it makes no sense why they wouldn't just copy that and it's so simple like just change the number on the back end from five to sixty like what, what, what are we doing the next thing I want to talk about is just the general engine and graphical upgrade that was done with Call of Dragons okay Call of Dragons the the graph I mean we are looking at look at this water it looks absolutely incredible it's gorgeous the trees are blowing in the wind the monsters are walking around with actual like animations it's actually insane the world looks so good and it has 3d terrain on the map whatever engine that this game was built on and the graphical capabilities that it comes with are amazing and if rise of kingdoms got a facelift if they gave it this same engine with a graphical style oh my can you imagine the wars bro oh my god so good and and i honestly haven't really experienced any massive lag spikes or you know events that became just unplayable as a result of the better engine and graphics it's truly amazing how well the game runs while also looking so good i mean look at this the water foams up as it breaks around the rocks coming down this river it's so beautiful man why can't rise of kingdoms look like this jesus <laughs> number seven on the list here i know you probably didn't even realize i was keeping track with numbers okay but yes number seven on the list here is an actual story and lore that is reflected out in the world and for example here we have the forerunners abbey this is just a beautiful sort of holy building in the middle of the woods but then we can zoom out and we can come over here to mount helios and okay we've got another completely unique structure out in the world okay let's zoom out and boom we have dragon's maw okay so there's actually like places of interest out in the world that have their own lore and story and and like there's a reason why they're here and there's connections to like the actual heroes that you can play with in the game and also there's uh, like little quests or side quests that call along with some of these places uh where you actually go to like the different villages nearby and you have to piece things together it's just amazing that there's an actual story in this game that you can follow and then see out in the world I mean it's it it makes the world actually feel alive and it feels like you're connected to the actual world in rise of kingdoms it's kind of just like a big grassy square so really big grassy square and there's some there's a couple of mountains and passes in the way of progressing around but that's it 
it's just a grassy square okay let's move on to some mechanics that i wish that rise of kingdoms would just just yoink from call of dragons the first one is crit rate and crit damage now this is a mechanic that is in many strategy games mmorpgs it's in action rpgs you name it there's lots of games with crit rate and crit damage your default crit rate is zero percent chance and your default crit damage is a 1.5 x multiplier and then you have heroes like Fregar who come in with an active skill that increases their crit rate by 60% for a certain duration. And I just think that's really cool. And they could take this in so many different ways. Imagine an equipment system where now you have a new piece of equipment that maybe doesn't give you as much of one stat, but it does give you a little bit of extra crit rate. Okay. So then you kind of have to do the math to figure out, okay, is it actually worth the trade-off in those stats? I think it would just add another level of uh, strategy to building an equipment set in rise of kingdoms. But on top of that, the best part is when, yo, if you are like, let's say in Rise of Kingdoms, you're rallying with your Nevsky and you get lucky enough to crit that active skill on your, you, you have a 2 million troop rally hitting up against a 2 million troop pass. And you just see this mega crit number, just boom, just like an absolute, just you nuke them from orbit, bro. Like those are the things that are actually hype. You just get lucky enough to get that one crit and you just, the pass explodes, man. That would be sick. Normally your skill shots are hitting for like 200 K and then out of nowhere, you just crit for 300 and then everyone loses their minds because those are the things that nerds like me just love to see in games like this. It's a very simple mechanic that I feel like would just be really cool to have in rise of kingdoms. Now on that topic, we have the other counterpart to Fragar, who is Sindrion. And he has a mechanic where, and again, this is present in other games as well, but his active skill says that for the next seven seconds you will launch an additional normal attack every second okay uh this is also really cool you could make this into like some sort of you know uh, like it says here a rapid fire mechanic and what's cool about this is like you might think okay well that's just like a double doubling the normal attack damage for one turn like that's not really that cool except for when you consider the fact that the amount of rage that you generate is based on your normal attacks okay so it's not actually like doubling your normal attack damage because you would also be doubling your rage regeneration for that turn as well and imagine if you're being swarmed and you're already regenerating a lot of rage and then all of a sudden now you're popping off even more normal attacks and your your rage is just going through the roof right i think this is yet another another very simple yet interesting mechanic that they could implement into the game that would just make it really cool right and again it doesn't have to be a part of a commander's uh you know skill it could be a part of like their equipment or maybe certain formations could just have a built-in chance of procking a double uh, normal attack for a given turn i don't know but i think that's another feature that they should have and finally we have pity systems built into certain events here in call of dragons which i wish we would get in rise of kingdoms if you look here on the lucky spin event this is essentially call of dragons version of the wheel of fortune and over on the right here you could see that i am at 45 out of 50. okay this means that no matter what in five spins i am guaranteed the best reward on the wheel which is 10 shards of Fragar, the legendary hero that's on the wheel we should have a pity system and look this is on top of the spin rewards okay so there's still guaranteed rewards in this game just like there is in rise of kingdoms if you spin 100 times you get a guaranteed reward with different milestones along the way here we have that system as well but we also have a pity system meaning you are guaranteed a certain number of these sculptures which is amazing but it doesn't stop there the gold chests have a guaranteed epic or legendary hero every 10 draws so no matter what you know that in 10 keys you'll get something at least semi-decent but guess what it doesn't stop there the forge of light is an event that comes around every once in a while and this is a great way to obtain artifacts now this is sort of like an ultra simplified version of equipment in rise of kingdoms it's a little bit different but if you look here there is a guaranteed chance at getting an artifact that you won after two failed attempts at getting a legendary okay now rise of kingdoms doesn't really have like a summoning mechanic to obtaining actual equipment but there is like the special talent system on the equipment right uh and so implementing some form of pity system in the wheel of fortune or in the gold keys i think that's a great idea 
that they should straight up just steal from call of dragons all right guys if you made it to the end of this video and you haven't played call of dragons before i highly recommend it there's going to be a link in the description below to give the game a try if you want to see a lot of these really awesome mechanics that are actually already implemented into a city builder game of course i am an official associate for call of dragons so clicking the link down below does help out the channel while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a call of dragons video comment down below your thoughts are there other systems in this game that i miss out on that you definitely think they should implement in rise of kingdoms i would love to hear from you guys and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other call of dragons players might see it and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again again soon. Peace.